I'm going to do something to not have it been for a while. I'm going to read another chapter of the search, or at least start one. We are now at chapter 13. which is getting pretty well into the book. For those of you who have not followed my readings from my book, The Search, you can go to the playlist, which I'm gonna put right up here. But we're gonna start at chapter 13 tonight because we have previously been through chapter 12. And Sheridan is the main character Right now, they are following Shepard, who is their guide, to try and get them out of this place called Hidden that they have been stuck in and, and just could not find a way out of. Every barrier came up in their path until they started following Shepard. So they are partway through the journey with him to escape Hidden. Diggory, the younger uh, character, just in chapter 12, just before this, has been having a lot of confusion about what is really going on. Okay, this is chapter 13, The Journey Up the Mountain. The mountain was not so difficult as Sheridan expected. In fact, they needed no gear at all. They were following a grown over but worn path slowly up the side of the mountain. The incline was steep but not treacherous. Shepard tended to take the lead a few feet ahead, but Sheridan was convinced he was very aware of everything they said and did. The way he would break into their conversations at opportune times suggested he listened intently. How tall is this mountain, Sheridan asked. Oh, it's a little over 3,000 feet from the base, Shepard answered. What do you think about following Shep up the mountain, Diggory asked Sheridan. What about it, Dig? Sheridan asked again. If he's a teaching Shepherd. What do you suppose he is going to teach us at the top? Diggory said, imitating some television actor that Sheridan couldn't put a name to. I think Shepard is the teacher, and I'll let him instruct. Okay, teach. Before we go any further, how can we be sure that what you have up there won't kill us? We've come across some terrible stuff on the way, Diggory taunted Shepard. I don't know what more I can do to convince you, Diggory. I haven't let anything harm you yet, have I? No, but where did you come from? Father, Shepard answered. Oh, that's easy. We all have fathers. Give me a break. Answer my question. I did. I came from my father. Okay, I'll bite. Who is your father? My father is the king of all good. What? If that's true, why are you out here stumbling over sharp rocks and bare feet? Being bitten by a snake and herding sheep. Degree almost sounded triumphant. It won't be much farther, was all Shepard would say. Can we sit and talk for a bit? This time Sheridan spoke up. Sure. Shepard stopped and turned around to look down at them. I'm beginning to have more questions now. I have been following you and more and more, I feel a connection, but I'm wondering if it's a true connection, or is it something I only hope for? I'm a little frightened, 
at what may be at the top of this mountain. Sheridan felt like a small child. You are an interesting pair, Shepard remarked almost as if he was speaking about them instead of to them. Why do you say that? Sheridan could understand why one would say that, but what was Shepard's point? Why do you think I chose the two of you to be together on this journey? Shepard asked. You chose us? I don't get it. The question puzzled Sheridan. You had no one else to bring. I was only, it was only the two of us. How did you get to Hidden? Shepard kept asking odd questions. I was on my way to a book signing and the fog forced me off the road. I ended up in Hidden. I haven't been able to get back out, Sheridan answered. But you knew that, didn't you? And you, Diggory. How did you find yourself in Hidden? I was driving a car across the country to its owner and to make some money. I was in a gas station and some guys came in and caused some trouble. I hightailed it out of there, but I haven't the foggiest idea how I got to Hidden, Diggory expounded. Okay, now I will explain part of what is happening to you, Shepard announced. Sheridan, you were not able to pull out of the fog because your car flipped over and you were thrown out of it. You are in a coma. Sheridan's shock was obvious. You are lying to me. Shepard, I put my trust in you, Sheridan was crying. The phone call you made to your family, was it odd that they said it was okay and they were waiting for you? I didn't think so at the time, Sheridan replied. After all that time of not being able to call anyone outside of him, you find yourself in a replica of your home making a call to your family. That wasn't odd to you? Well, yes, that was very odd, Sheridan's voice quivered. Talking to your family was real, but you weren't on a phone. Your house was some of Catch's sorcery. He's been trying to pull you to his side before I returned. Why would Catch deceive me like that, Sheridan asked. How could he put my home there in such a short time? Nobody seems to have an answer that except sorcery. He is a sorcerer of the worst kind. He is a deceiver. He conjured much in your mind. Okay, Diggory chimed in. What is all this? If he is an evil sorcerer, what are you? Why are you upsetting Sheridan so much if Catch is the bad one? This is a place my father chose. Armies of followers built it. Catch didn't like that, and so he sent his serpent to destroy it. We didn't let him in to destroy the meadow. Father banned Catch because of his evil destruction. This was once a beautiful place. Now it's a dark canyon and rocky mountainside. If there was one way of being calmly passionate, Shepard's composure as he spoke would fit that description. Wait, I'm totally lost. Why are Sheridan and I an odd pair? Diggory broke in. You are a drug addict who has been lost, but your roots are good. Those men you saw blew up that gas station. They were not there for money. They were there to destroy. When you tried to leave, they shot the gas pumps and your car caught fire and exploded. 
Diggory exploded. You liar! No, Diggory, it's not a lie. Shepard spoke softly. Shepard motioned them to sit on a rocky ridge not far from the path. Their legs hung over the canyon below. Shepard remained just above them on the path. Do you feel safe sitting there? Well, yes, as long as nobody pushes us off, Sheridan replied, and Diggory nodded. There was a time my father asked me to trust that he would not let me fall. I slid to the very edge. Catch was with us and wanted to test my father because he wanted to make me doubt the king. Catch pushed me and I was at the precipice, falling over the edge, when at once my father was immediately before me. With that statement, Shepard was face to face with Sheridan and Diggory. Sheridan gasped and looked down to see what Shepard was standing on. His feet were not touching anything. He was in midair. Shepard continued. Father pushed me back on the ledge and held me up. It was that day that he banished Catch from his kingdom. He said that Catch had many chances to quit challenging him, but he continued to rebel. But I'm gonna have to quit there tonight. <laughs> That's all we had the time for. I think some of you are probably starting to figure this story out by now. <laughs> If you've been following along and we are coming to a conclusion here before long we know that Sheridan has been told that she's in a coma we have yet to see what comes from that I am off on Wednesday I will be back on Friday <laughs> with the puppets it's gonna be puppet time it's going to be their day to be Buster and Rosie time. So, uh, everybody, please subscribe if you have not. The Charlie Bueller series, from which Who Be Charlie B is the first book, is in the description below. You can find a link to it at smashwords.com. Use the code that is there, and you'll be able to receive a free electronic version and then you can catch up on that and then when finding Charlie a forbidden romance is out which is very soon subscribe click the bell give us a thumbs up share us come back and see us but most of all when you see a neighbor smile and wave even if it's a two-finger farmer wave or sometimes one. It's acknowledgement. It's acceptance. It's just a way to say, I see you. Thank you very much. About a, sorry about the <laughs> thing on my teeth here. I've got false teeth. And mm, I just click against them sometimes by accident. <laughs> yeah, I'm not even going to include that part, so you won't even know. Maybe I'll put it in a blooper. <laughs> <laughs>